Hello. Welcome once again to Stuff and Things, where I like to talk about stuff, and occasionally even things. I'm your good friend Bradley, and today is a pleasant Sunday smoke. And on this pleasant Sunday smoke, I am sheltering from the wind and the rain, huddled in the Stuff and Things studios. Um, it is actually raining like a bastard outside right now, and it has been doing so for quite a while. It's amazing... Here we are talking about the weather again, but, you know... It's something to talk about, and it's something that I guess I pay attention to quite a bit for some reason. I don't know why. It has been... We had a very nice late summer and early fall here in the Pacific Northwest, and then, again, like flicking a light switch, the weather just went crazy. We have had crazy wind and rainstorms. We are forecasted to have a mofo of a wind and rainstorm on actually Saturday night. I'm recording this during the day on Saturday. Um, they're forecasting like 70 mile an hour winds. I mean, crazy. That's hurricane level, you know, I don't know what category of hurricane, but it's supposedly the remnants of a typhoon that was coming through. And I don't know if it's really going to get that bad, depending on how the low pressure system shunts through the area. But it has been pretty wild. And actually, I guess it was yesterday, um, I was out and about and I was driving home, got, had to get on the freeway, and it was so rainy and so windy that I had to pull off because my little four-cylinder truck, it's very economical, um, but not great when there is a 60 mile an hour headwind on the freeway. I just couldn't do it. I couldn't drive and it was raining so hard that my windshield wipers couldn't keep up. And I notice, you know, there's these big square tour buses on the freeway just being buffeted by the wind, veering into other lanes. Very, very crazy. The power's been going in and out all the time. Um, that's one thing I'm hoping that if there is a horrible, horrible windstorm tonight that it's not gonna like knock my power out and make it difficult for me to upload videos. I guess if you're watching this, then I was able to get this uploaded. But uh, yeah, crazy weather. It seems like the storms have been hitting a little earlier this year. But I don't mind. I like fall and I like wind and I like rain up to a point. But once they start negatively impacting my ability to do the things that I want to do, then I get annoyed. So give me a show. Put on a nice show. Don't inconvenience me, Mother Nature. All right. Is that too much to ask in this day and age? I have several things written down that I wanted to talk about. Um, usually I talk about the videos that I'm going to be showing you guys in the future. So I mentioned in the last Sunday Smoke, I had asked whether or not you guys would like to see a review of some common over-the-counter tobacco blends. And that's sort of a, a weird definition, like what is an over-the-counter tobacco blend? And I guess just maybe... At least in the U.S., they're the blends that you might find in a drugstore. Like if you walk into a Walgreens or a Rite Aid, you are not going to find anything by Dunhill or McBaron or, well, maybe some pouch McBaron stuff. But you're not going to find Dunhill. You're not going to find GLPs or Cornell and Deal or anything like that. But you might find, you definitely will find Captain Black. You might find Carter Hall. You might find Prince Albert. Things like that. So they're sort of the mass market easily attainable pipe tobacco blends. And I said, maybe I would review Carter Hall. Well, I can't find it. And <laughs> it's really weird. I have gone to, I don't know how many drugstores, uh, my local tobacco shop, the actual real tobacconist, not like a glass pipe head shop, but the one that sells actual pipe tobacco, they don't have it because they only have, you know, quality blends. Um, the Rite Aid by my house that used to have their sort of old school tobacco wall that had, you know, roll your own tobaccos and various kind of cheap pipe tobaccos, that's gone now. They've remodeled. They just have a cigarette wall now. Um, I went to the Walgreens nearby, uh, several grocery stores that have pipe tobacco, no Carter Hall, no Captain Black, nothing, nothing. And so I'm going to have to order Carter Hall from smokingpipes.com because I cannot find it in the drugstore. Ironically, the drugstore blend is unattainable in drugstores. So you'll have to hold off on the Carter Hall review, but instead, I know you're going to be horribly disappointed, I have reviewed this. Bell's Three Nuns, produced by MacBaron. This current version is produced by MacBaron. It has been produced by other producers in the past. 
Um, it was originally made in the 19th century by J&F Bells. Uh, it was an imperial tobacco, and that version had Perique in it. It was a Virginia Perique mixture. Then Orlick took it over, licensed the name, and started producing their version of Three Nuns, and they snipped out the Perique and added in Dark Fire Kentucky. The McBaron version continues that. Um, and they're sort of these loose cut coins. So it's a blend that a lot of people talk about. You know, uh, C.S. Lewis supposedly smoked three nuns. Tolkien supposedly smoked three nuns. But they smoked a Virginia Perique mixture. This is not the three nuns they smoked. So I'm reviewing it as someone just going in with no prejudices whatsoever, because I've never had the old versions. I recorded this review. This will be posting this Wednesday. I am actually smoking it right now in my Dunhill, beautiful Dunhill Shellbriar pipe, and I am enjoying it. I just reviewed, well, I guess the week before last, uh, reviewed Capstan, which is another, ironically, another licensed tobacco produced by MacBaron. I didn't plan it out that way, but somehow that's what happened. So you'll be getting two of those in a row, two MacBaron blends, um, recreations of old blends produced by MacBaron. So look forward to that. Then I'm going to try to get my Dark Souls videos done this week uh, as per usual. And then I also have, I may have a shoe review coming up pretty soon. I was contacted by a company. This may or may not happen. Um, there is a certain feature of the shoes that they wanted to send me that does not in any way apply to me. And I know that might sound weird, like what feature could shoes have that wouldn't work for somebody. So they... May, they, they seem slightly reticent now about sending me the shoes, which is fine. You know, they don't have to send me shoes. I don't care. But if they do, I'll review those. Um, last week, we had a Universal Yums box opening. I've already got another box on the way, so there will be another one forthcoming. Um, and then I may be getting another journal. You guys remember our good friend ZLYC. I've reviewed several of their journals. I may be getting another one from them soon. They just contacted me again. So as per usual, there's lots of content coming up, in the up on the channel. Um, just a matter of when I get these things and when I have time to produce videos and edit the videos and upload the videos. But just, if you're not subscribed, subscribe and keep in touch with the channel so you know what's gonna be coming up on the channel. That's the best advice I can give you if you don't wanna miss anything. And then, what else do I have written down here? Um, I guess we'll do our little football minute here really quick. I know a lot of people don't like it when I talk about American football. Invariably, there's always someone who snootily derides the fact that we call football football because it's not really football. It should be called something else. I'm sorry. Uh, it's not my fault. <laughs> that's, that's the sport we have. Um, there are many games that developed out of proto-soccer or what Europeans call football. Uh, rugby, uh, Australian rules football, there's a lot of different things. And modern soccer or football being one of them. Uh, American football is another one of those games. It's what developed here. We like it. Uh, I like it. I'm sorry if you don't. But the Seahawks are playing the Falcons this week, uh, tomorrow. They're coming off a bye week. Bye week means that they didn't play for one week, sort of a rest. And I am quite looking forward to this game. It should be really good. The Falcons have been really good, have a very high-powered offense. The Seattle Seahawks have a very high-powered defense. So it'll be an interesting clash of uh, the respective Titans. So I'm looking forward to that. And then I wrote down some stuff that may or may not be interesting to some of you. I am sort of a lapsed Nintendo fan. And I've touched on this a little bit in the past. Um, I was talking about some old school Nintendo games that I was playing, some of the Mega Man series. I was around when the original NES was around, but I didn't really get it until very late in the Nintendo Entertainment System's life cycle. And it was really the Super Nintendo that I kind of latched onto as a, as a kid. But I did play the NES and I have a lot of good memories of those old NES games. And uh, so I had the NES, I had the Super NES, I had the... Uh, what was next? The Nintendo 64, I had a GameCube, I had a Wii briefly. Um, I had, I think I've had every Nintendo handheld, the original Game Boy, Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance, Game Boy DS, 3DS, all of those. Um, really enjoyed Nintendo games. And then 
I had the Wii for a little bit and just thought, this is stupid. Even though they had some great first party games, I just sort of, I fell out of love with Nintendo. I didn't know what they were doing. Why are you doing what you're doing? And then they came out with the Wii U, which again, just didn't seem to have any purpose really just this underpowered kind of gimmicky console. So I'd kind of gone away from console gaming in general anyway. Usually if I'm playing games, it's gonna be on PC nowadays. But Nintendo long ago announced that they were gonna be coming out with a new console, the NX. And it's supposedly coming out in March of next year, but they have still released no details about it whatsoever. And it is driving me absolutely insane because the things that I have heard about it, these rumors that have leaked have been kind of intriguing. Um, it may be this hybrid console, which is basically a handheld device that you can take anywhere, but that can also dock with your television and you can play on the TV. So they're combining their handheld and their home consoles into one device. So all the first party Nintendo development teams that are making games will just be making them for one device, which sounds very cool. And I am so annoyed that Nintendo hasn't released any information about it. And it's just one of those stupid things where I'm, you know, I'm in my 30s, I'm a grown man. I haven't really played Nintendo games much except for on a couple of their handholds recent, handhelds recently. But I'm just like, I'm not really the kind of person who gets really hyped up about product launches. Occasionally, you know, if a new iPhone or something is coming out, I may read some previews or some hands-on impressions of it and things like that. And I get slightly excited, but I'm not obsessive. But for some reason, I've just become obsessive about this Nintendo console. And I think it is because they just haven't told us anything. It's driving me insane. I would love to have a Nintendo console again. I would love to play Zelda and Mario, um, all the series that we have grown to love throughout the years. I'm hoping that Nintendo has learned from their past mistakes and is able to rectify the situation with a console that is actually worth owning. Um, so I'm looking forward to hearing something about that. I don't know if that interests any of you at all. And then the only other thing I have to talk about this week is a slight rant. You see this. This is a to-go coffee cup. Um, very typical for the US. If you go to a coffee shop and order coffee to go, this is probably what you're gonna get with a lid like this. Um, normally when I have coffee, I make it at home. I make it in the morning. I have a French press. I make two cups. I put one in a mug for me to drink during the morning. And then I put the rest, the other cup in a sort of travel container like this. This is a clean canteen, thermos container. Um, keeps it hot for hours. Very handy, has a great lid on it that you can seal up. You can close it and we'll see, <laughs> see if this actually works. Um, it is leak proof, nothing drips out. And there is, there is coffee in this at the moment. It's very handy and I love it. It works very well. But on the weekends, as is my tradition, I go get a bagel and get some coffee and I read, but then I always get my coffee to go because I'm the kind of person who drinks coffee for hours. I don't just, I know in Europe, maybe this is more common for people to just go to a cafe and they order an espresso or they order a coffee and they just drink it while they're there. I get coffee and I take it with me and I'm sipping on it throughout the day. And so if I'm getting coffee to go, it comes in a cup like this all this crazy preamble is just to say it is the year 2016. Why can't we develop a freaking coffee cup and lid that does not spew coffee forth when you're just walking around? I don't know how many times in my life I have my to-go coffee cup. There may only be half a cup left and I'm just, hey, just walking down the street and suddenly for no reason whatsoever, a jet of coffee will shoot out of the little spout, the little opening in the lid and hit me in the face or get all over my clothing or my crotch, which is even better. So you have a nice wet patch on your crotch. I did not wet myself. My coffee cup just spit at me for no reason. I don't know what it is. I don't know how some sort of weird resonant frequency works up within the cup and suddenly this strange whirlwind, this vortex develops and it just forces the coffee out of the top. Why can't we solve this problem? 
scientists, I know you're working on the cure for AIDS, I know you're working on cancer, I know you're working on a lot of important things, but this will actually impact my life a lot more than those things will. <laughs> That's very selfish, I know, but I don't have AIDS, nor do I have cancer, as far as I know. Um, I want a coffee lid that does not spit at me when I'm walking around. Fair enough, if I were like jumping up and down and doing aerobics or something, or running with my coffee, a little spillage, that would be fine. But when I'm just holding it stationary, walking along the sidewalk, it should not shoot a jet of coffee into my face. We need to solve this problem. World, rise up. Let's put our heads together and let's come up with a solution. I've been your good friend Bradley. You've been the audience. This has been Stuff and Things on a Pleasant Sunday Smoke. I'll see you later.